Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really, really, really appreciate you. Um, today I'm going to do an audio sermon because the camera is acting funny again. Um, today's sermon is going to be called A New Grace. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done and what you're about to do. I thank you because you're, you are just God and it's just awesome how you love us imperfect beings called human. God, I pray that you just restore, heal, and deliver right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Speak to me, speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys. Thank you for joining me today on audio. Um, my sermon today is going to be called A New Grace. When I asked the Lord um, what he wanted me to talk about the day he gave me this title and I was like what do you mean a new grace he said he said grace is more than unmerited favor it's it it shows my unending unwavering unflinching love for people Um, because we're, we're told that grace is God's unmerited favor, but he said the fact that we are his, the fact that we are his is an indication that we deserve everything that comes along with it. Uh, so the favor is the the grace is more than unmerited. It's a picture of who he is. So so let me uh, tell so let me explain it this way. Um, say if a family has three kids. That family has a house, and you know, you know, after after the parents get get old in their senior years and they pass away, everything in that house belongs to those kids. So everything the parents have belongs to those kids, and not even. Everything the parents have belonged to those kids, but pieces of who the parents are are in those kids and what they imparted. I heard somebody say one time, it's not about what you leave for people, it's what you leave in people that matters. So if the parents left something in their children um, that will begin to show and quite often uh, I know for me sometimes with with my mother uh, I often say oh my gosh I would never do that and now I find myself doing that same thing because it's what she left in me. It's, it's, and yes, we do make our own decisions, but um, because of how we were raised, we take certain things uh, from our parents, from our families, from our upbringing. It's all, it all comes into raising us. 
how they how they thought, how they felt, how, how they acted. And yes, when we become an adult, we can make our own decisions. We can decide uh, whether we want to uh, do this or parent this way or do things this way. But it starts off. But we, but nine times out of ten. We do take some things from our parents. So that's why it's very important for parents to set an example. Because if your kids don't take everything, they'll take something. Your kids might not take everything from you, but they'll take something. And, and although you think your teenager is not listening to you, um, at the moment that they need it, the advice that you give, the example that you show, will come back to them, and that may cause them to make a different decision. Um, and so, getting back to a new grace now, if it, if that is the case in the natural. That means everything our father, our father has, every, everything our father owns, is ours. Um, either, either in a spiritual sense, or sometimes in the physical sense. Um, and I know some people take that part of it too far. It's like the cattle on a thousand hills is mine because my father made it and all that stuff. And yes, that's true to a certain extent. And some people take advantage of that, saying, well, blah, but grab it, it's yours because it's his and blah, blah, blah. But it's not so much the physical stuff. It's the, um, it's the um, spiritual stuff that he left for us, that he wants us to take um, in ourselves. Um, because, because the grace is something that he, he gives out, but he wants it. He wants it to be not only his gift to us, but something we give out to other people. And because, um, God said something awesome to me. God said, grace is not about what we did. It's about who he is. Let me say that again. Grace is not about what he, no, grace is not about what we did, it's about who he is. Grace is a way to show people who God is. Grace has very little to do with the act of whatever you did, or you don't deserve grace or whatever, or you deserve grace. But it's more about who he is. Grace is heaven's way of showing the world who God really is. Grace is heaven's way of showing the world who God really is. So when you extend grace to somebody, you're extending Christ to somebody. So... When he extends grace to you, he extends himself to you. So, so, in other words, grace is Christ. Christ is grace. Grace is Christ. Christ is grace. So, when you extend, so the grace of God is actually the himself 
of God. So because because he he put it in himself, he then extends an an attribute of himself to us. And then when we extend grace to other people, we don't uh, get them off the hook. Oh, that's grace, whatever. We actually extend Christ himself to other people. And people get to see um, who Christ is by the grace and the love we extend to them. Uh, I love the church. I always have. I grew up in the church. But one thing I can say that we've had a problem extending grace to people because we think God needs someone to fight for him. Um, but he doesn't. He's God. He could do that himself. Um, he could extend his own his own um, he could mete out his own punishment if he chooses to. He doesn't need us. But what he needs us to do is extend love to people. Extend grace to people. Because love like grace is when you love somebody, you're Christing somebody. So lo Christ doesn't have love. He is love. Christ doesn't have grace. He is grace. Grace is not something that he is. It's, it's who he is. Grace is not something that he has. It's who he is. Love is not something that he has. It's who he is. So when, so when we talk about the love of God, we're actually talking about um, the Christ of God. Because he's extending himself to people. And when we extend love to people, we are actually um, extending Christ to people. Um, so we're actually giving them Christ. And sometimes, and I always say this about love. Love is not accept, um, love is not saying everything's okay, we'll just be fuzzy and whatever together. It can be that. But love is most oftentimes the strongest, toughest emotion. Um, a lot of people think love is just this weak, oh, let's fall in love, it's so happy. But no, love is not a Hallmark movie. Love is tough, love is strong, love is du durable, love is vulnerable, and in that love, you find Christ. So, love is tough. Love is strong. Love is also vulnerable. Love is also giving. It's, it's just a lot of different things that go into love. And all those things that I mentioned just now their Christ. So, when you extend love to Christ, um, no, when you extend love to people, you are actually, you are actually extending Christ to people. Um, so, instead of saying, I love you, you can actually say, I Christ you because love is Christ Christ is love so um, so, so that's why it's important to love because 
will extend um, Christ to people when we love. And they will see how strong, how compassionate, how giving love is. And sometimes real love takes work. Real love is not a Hallmark movie where everything everything is all right in the end and the cameras turn up turn off. In real life, love is hardcore. Love is is something you have to work through. Love takes patience. Love is kind. Love is all those things, but it's also work and the work of love um is sometimes very hard for people and real love is forged in in pain most real love is forged in pain it's forged in grit it has happier moments yes it has it has those moments, it has everything, but it's mostly forged in the trials and the tribulations and the pain of life. Um, the reason why um, marriage, the re- the, the, and now I'm not married, but the couples that I see that are still quote unquote in love um, they've gone through things together. They've gone through hell together. They've gone through financial difficulties. Some of them have gone through um, marital unfaithfulness. Some of them have gone, had to forgive seven times, seven times seven or more. But it makes them a stronger couple. And even in friendship, um, there is nothing that forges a friendship in love than hardship. Love is best forged in hardship. And, and grace is be- best forged sometimes in hardship. Grace is not um, a get her to jail free card. Um, grace says... Even though you wronged me, even though you you did, even though you hurt me, even though the situation is not right, I can still embrace who you are. Um, and sometimes we have a hard time embracing who people are. It is easier to look at what people did and scoff and whatever than to see who people are. But God is calling us to look beyond what people did to who they really are and to understand that but for the grace of God, there go I. We can, we can be the same, do the same thing to given, um, given the person's circumstances, given what they had to go through, we might end up in the same situation or worse if we were um, if we were them. So remember that in that level at least we're all the same and God wants us to know that for all of us today there is grace there is grace and grace is forged in trials and tribulations grace is forged in trials and tribulations which 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 i can which i can um say as love is forged in trials and tribulations grace is forged made stronger, made more durable in trials and tribulations. Because when you extend grace to people that are going through a hard time, that have fallen, that 
that grace will make that relationship stronger. That, that grace will make that relationship better and then they'll draw people closer just like love. Grace, like love, is forged in trials and tribulations. And we need to understand that we need to stop looking at what the person did and look at who God is in that person. Or we we need to stop looking at what the person did and look at who he is. Who does he say he is? He said he's love. He said um, in love, he said he's patient, he's kind, he doesn't take offense. All those things that he says in, Carib- in, in um, Corinthians uh, 13, 1 Corinthians 13, all all those things he says about love, those are not only attributes that we have, but it's the attributes that he is. So he is patient. He is kind. He is never jealous. He's never rude or conceited. All those things that he says about love. And it is... It behooves us as believers to show that kind of love to people. And what what I always say love is, love is not uh, agreeing with everything a person say or everything or saying everything's okay that a person does. Um, love is to say, even if I don't agree with you, I embrace who you are. I don't agree with what you did, but I embrace who you are. And there's a misunderstanding that to love somebody, you have to you have to agree with everything that they they do or whatever. But no, you don't have to agree with every choice that they make. You don't have to um, agree with everything that they do or make them do what you want to love them. You am love is not that. Love is about embracing who they are despite the fact you may not agree with them. You still can love them. You still can embrace them. You still can show kindness. You still can be patient. And love, like grace, is forged in tribulation. Like I said. And that's what the Lord wants us to see, to, want us to know today. That love, like grace, is forged in tribulation. And His love is just waiting for you. It's just ready and able to forgive, uh, ready and able to change you. And real love can change, real love and real grace can change a- any situation around. Grace can turn any situation around. Love can turn any situation around. And it behooves us as believers to understand that through our grace to people, through ex- extending Christ to people, through grace and through love, um, we can uh, change any situation more than anger or resentment or any of those negative emotions can. And the Lord wants us to remember today that we are nobody's judge, but we can be their light. We can shine 
by our grace and by our love, we can shine light in the darkness. And Christians have been n not really known for shining light in the darkness. We've been known for judging people and criticizing people. And the Lord wants us to say, no, that is not how we um, receive people into the kingdom. We receive people into the kingdom by our love and by our grace. And like I said about grace, grace is more about who he is than what we did. And love is more about um, embracing the person even if we don't agree with them rather than agreeing with everything a person does. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I hope this sermon was a blessing to you. It was certainly a blessing to me just um, uh, to me just preaching it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. See you next week. Bye. Let's, let's think about his love. Let's think about his goodness. Think about his grace. That brought us through. For his high is the heavens above. So great.